Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is Superman Story 13 from 1940. So let's get started. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Mysterious visitor from another world who has appeared on Earth as the champion of the weak and the oppressed. When we left saw Superman in his character of Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet, he had just learned that the two swindlers, Bartley Pemberton and Joseph Deneen, were heading south in a high-speed cruiser in order to catch up with the freight steamer Madison on her way to Charleston. As our story continues today, Superman is winging his way down the coast, straining his eyes for the first glimpse of the powerboat or the freighter. The Pemberton and Deneen have caught up with the Madison. Four sharp blasts of their whistles, red rockets, distress signals, and the freighter is motionless in the black water, waiting for the smaller boat to come alongside. On the deck of the cruiser, Bartley Pemberton gives a last quick order to the man at the wheel. Listen. Pay attention, sailor. Okay, sir. Make it fast, Bart. We're dropping a ladder over the side. Head her in there, sailor. And get this. I'm listening. We're going on board that freighter to get something, you understand? If we don't get it, there may be trouble. Big trouble. So what? So stick around to pick us up. We want to make a fast getaway, so stay close. Ready to beat it. Get set, Bart. What do we do now? Stand by to grab that ladder, Joe. All right, sailor. Ahoy on that cruiser. We're waiting for you. Don't worry. You won't wait long. Go ahead, sailor. Edge in for that ladder. All right, Mr. Burns. Hold her under a dead slow bell. We see what's wrong with those fellows. Ah, here they come, Anderson. Ahoy down there. What about the cruiser? What's wrong with it? Captain, sir, two men are coming up the ladder. They want to see you. They want to see me. Ask them what they mean by sounding distress signals. Well, there they are, Captain. Coming over the rail now. What do you want done with them? They better have a mighty good reason for stopping us, Mr. Burns. If they haven't, I'll put them in irons. Ahoy there. Bring those two men up to my cabin. Anybody else coming aboard? No, sir, they say that's all. Mr. Burns, hold us steady. Steady as you, sir. Keep an eye on the weather, Mr. Burns. It's thickening up. Very good, sir. Sound your foghorn while we're hold to. Have Mr. Rose and bring those men to my cabin. And a few moments later, Pemberton and Deneen are ushered to Captain Anderson's cabin. Come in. Here they are, sir, the two men off the cruiser. Come in, gentlemen. Oh, Captain. Am I addressing Captain Simpson Anderson? Yes, sir, you are. Captain, my friend and I have followed your ship to Madison all the way down the coast, hoping to catch up with you. You know you've stopped a vessel on government service? Government service? I thought this was a freighter, a tramp. Thank you for your description of it, sir. As it happens, we're carrying munitions. Munitions? Well, isn't that a bit dangerous, Captain? Don't worry. Transporting gun cotton and TNT isn't half as dangerous as giving false signals of distress, as you'll find out. Just let us explain, Captain. Captain Anderson, we've been sent by your sister, June. Before you sailed, she gave you a certain package of papers, didn't she? Sealed with orange skin? What of it? Are they in that safe there in the wall? What business is it of yours? Your sister told us to get them. So it isn't too much trouble, Captain. One moment, mister. I suppose my sister gave you written instructions. Uh, a letter? Well, no, as a matter of fact, she didn't. Didn't have time. Oh, she didn't have time. Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I don't believe you. No, look here, Captain. Hey, I say I don't believe you. If this thing was so all fired important, you'd follow me down the coast. They'd use the fake distress signals to get me to pick you up. You ought to be able to prove what you say. Listen, Captain, we've got to have those papers. You'll get them when we land at Charleston. And I've talked with my sister by phone, but not until then. Is that so, Captain Anderson? Stand where you are, please. Why, you... What do you mean, pulling a gun I on me? I mean business, Captain. Keep your hands up. All right, Joe. Get after that shape. You'll land in prison for this. Quiet, please. Well, what about it, Joe? Nothing doing, Bart. That's a blow. Didn't you say there was soup in the hold? That's right. Carrying munitions, aren't you, Captain? Show us how to get to the hold. Find out for yourself. I said take us to the hold, Captain. I'm not fooling. Open the door, Joe. Now listen to me, Captain Anderson. You're going to take us down along the deck and into the hold. No, I'll be shot if I will. You'll be shot if you don't. We've come a long way, Captain. We've done a good deal to make sure of those papers, and we won't stop now. Not even at murder. Get going. Come on. Keep moving. I'm right behind you, Captain, with this pistol in my pocket. If we need any of your crew, keep quiet. All right, now move. Out of the captain's cabin, along the deck, and into the 
echoing stillness of the hall. All right, this will do nicely. Sir, sit down now and take it easy, Captain. I'll meet you to leave and let you come. Try him out, boys. What are you going to do, Bart? Carry some stuff back up to the cabin and blow the same? No, oh, no, it takes much time. As long as I'm going to take him on that store, as long as that horse is all right. But if we don't get him out of the safe, they'll remain in the safe, and the safe will remain on the ship, and the ship will be blown to pieces. Well, now, what do you mean to do, you murdering plan? What I mean to do, Captain Anderson, is to remove every trace of you and your ship. Why, you never dare! You're out of your mind. You're a plain man. Help! Help! Go on and go. Help! Get out of the head. Help! 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 Help!
Smash will open that up. And there's the package. Must be. Wrapped in oil skin, marked June Anderson. Pemberton, this is the time you lose. Now out. Fast. No time for the stairs. Out through the wall. And away. So that was Superman Story 13 from 1940. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.